Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the new lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to start a new topic that is the static synchronous compensator, shortly known as STATCOM. So this is actually one more method of rate to power or voltage control. This method actually does not involve the use of actual capacitors or inductors for the rate to power control. It, uh, it actually exploits the capacitor effect and inductor effect. What uh, it does, it draws the current from the system, which is either leading to the voltage, that is the statcom voltage or bus voltage, or it may be lagging to this bus voltage. So by doing this, it is able to control the reactor power. It is uh, able to do both that it can produce uh, or it can absorb the reactor power directly. It is similar to ideal synchronous uh, machine, synchronous machine, that is why uh, it <coughs> gets its name synchronous. Uh, and static because the normal synchronous machine is a rotating machine. The statcom is static, that is why it has got this part of the name that is static synchronous compensator. So, as a synchronous machine that does not have uh, their capacitors or inductors inherent, same is the case with this. If this compensator is without power source, then it cannot exchange the real power. It is then known as statcom. So, because of these things, it has derived its name as statcom. Sometimes it is also capable of exchanging the real power if there is any power source from the DC side. So what is the STATCOM? It is a shunt connected reactor power compensator that is capable of generating and or means both, sometimes both, sometimes only one, absorbing a reactor power and in which in which it can be varied to control the specific parameter of the power system. So we know that this specific parameter of the power system is the voltage. <coughs> STATCOM has least inertia because there are no bulky capacitors and inductors. So it takes less time to exchange the rate to power. The converter used for the STATCOM are either DC to AC converter or AC to AC converter. If DC to AC converters are used, that means they are usually the inverters. And AC to AC converters, they can be AC voltage converters or AC voltage regulators or cyclo converters. Normally, DC to AC converters use that is the inverter to produce the three phase AC of desired magnitude and angle. This is very important to produce it of desired magnitude and desired angle. It consists of solid, st solid states that is the power electronics switches. There are usually two types of converters one is a voltage source inverter VSI. Sometimes it is also known as voltage source converter VSC and current source inverter that is CSI. Mostly voltage source inverter is used in this field. It is because of the advantages of voltage source inverter over the current source inverter. The current source inverter may be a semiconductor device having bidirectional voltage blocking capability. So that means current source inverter it should have both voltage blocking capability. Available devices which we use for the as switches are GTU that is gate turn of thyristor and IGBT. But these block only in one direction. So they will block, they will block only in one direction. They can be made to block in another direction, that is, they can be made to be by direction, but with extra costs and extra losses. So in that case, CSI may not be preferred. CSI need a voltage source termination. It is because for a voltage source type of uh, the source, we need a current source type of load for the termination. Similarly, for the current source type of the source, we need a voltage source type of the load. So for the current source type of load, that is current source inverter, we need a voltage source termination at AC terminal. That is in the form of a filter capacitor. We need a filter capacitor at the AC terminal. In case of voltage source, inverter we need a current source type of the termination in the form of inductor but that inductor is already provided by the coupling transformer 
but in case of the CSI we have to use another capacitor other than the coupling transformer inductor that is why we here use the voltage source inverter charge capacitor is used across the input terminal in VSI and charge inductor is used across the input terminal of the CSI which is different <coughs> definitely for a current source at input we need an inductor and for a voltage source we need a capacitor for a particular uh, energy source for a particular energy amount uh, the size of the inductor will be more as compared to the size of the capacitor that's why we use capacitor as computer inductor voltage source inverter provides inherent protection against the over voltages because of the capacitor but in case of CSI we need to provide an extra protection circuit so but there is an uh, there is one advantage of this uh, we can say CSI over VSI or disadvantage of VSI in case of CSI uh, it limits automatically its uh, current to the value of its uh, current source even if there occurs the short circuit so what are other advantages of using statcom it provides a dynamic control in transmission distribution system power oscillations uh, power oscillation damping is improved you will see that when the power changes when the power change the rotor oscillates uh, around its final steady state position before it reaches there so that oscillation will be damped because of uh, this statcom transient stability uh, is increased we'll discuss this input voltage flicker control <coughs> because voltage flickering is sometimes the problem this also improves this it makes less flickering of the voltage other than rate to power control it can also exchange real power when real power source is there <coughs> so it is able to control the real and rate to power also so the broader comparison between the svc and statcom statcom it's a small space as computer svc as it does not use bulky reactor and capacitor that's quite obvious statcom is a modular form so they, they are easily to install no specific installation method is required so usually statcom is in the modular form that means one there even if the, uh, there are let us say 100 parts in the statcom we make 10 parts the sub part of this and then join them 10 parts so we can say we have a modular form of this statcom because of the modular nature commissioning time is reduced as compared to svc so commissioning time means from the start start of the uh, we can see site inspection to the actual installation at the noise commissioning time which is reduced because of the uh, less number of modular design and uh, we can say compact design statcom is not affected by the environment as it is an electronic device so electronic devices they also have some environmental effect but the environmental effect which was there for bulk, bulky reactor and capacitor that does not affect the statcom now the basic principle of operation of the statcom this is the usual statcom we have bus and then a coupling transformer to step down the voltage and this is the inverter voltage source converter and this is the dc source so usually as i have told you this is used to control the voltage or to control the reactive power so we also know that this reactive power is proportional to the difference of the voltage that is bus voltage minus statcom voltage from this you can see that if v bus is greater than v statcom this q will flow from bus to this it will act as an inductor it will consume the reactive power if this v statcom is greater than this so in that case q is negative it will flow in this direction so it will act as an inductor so this is the equivalent circuit of this statcom you can say this is a voltage source statcom this is excess that is the leakage reactance of this transformer and this is the bus here also this is the same thing if is this is um, this is ac terminals of this statcom if the current is in this direction you will see that is leading statcom voltage will be more than bus voltage will supply the rate to power to the source sorry to the bus similarly if v statcom is less than v bus in that case it will draw the rate to power current will be lagging so this figure explains the same the exchange of the rate to power between the converter 
and the AC system can be controlled by varying the amplitude of the three phase amplitude voltage V statcom of the converter as illustrated in the figure below. That is this. That is, if the amplitude of the output voltage increases above that of the utility bus voltage V bus, if this is greater than this, then the current flows through the reactance from the converter to the AC system and the converter uh, generates the generates the capacitive reactive power for the system. In that case, what, what, what does it mean? It means that when V statcom is greater than this, Q is negative. That means it will supply the reactive power to the system. If the amplitude of the output voltage is decreased below the utility bus voltage, that means if bus voltage is uh, greater than this V statcom voltage, uh, the converter absorbs the inductive power. The current will be lagging. The current will be lagging. That is in this direction. And it absorbs the inductive reactive power. If the output voltage equals the AC system voltage, if the, if the output voltage, that means if bus voltage is same as that of statcom voltage, this will be equal to zero. The reactive power extent will be zero, in which case statcom is said to be in the floating state. In that case, it is said to be in the floating state. <coughs> Let us try to do it in more specific way. The first case is when both the voltage that is bus voltage and statcom voltage are in phase. We have this figure again the same equivalent circuit of the uh, statcom. So the first figure is that when uh, the statcom current leads the voltage by 90 dB, so it will act as a capacitor. You can see from here, from this you will see that the statcom voltage is equal to bus voltage minus this voltage rod. That is, V statcom is equal to V bus minus uh, this J I stat axis, or I stat is equal to V bus minus V statcom divided by J axis. We'll be using this equation to draw the different phases. So, if this is V bus, the current is leading to the V bus, and this will be the voltage drop across XS, that is J I stat axis, it will be leading to the current by 90 degrees. Then V bus has to be added by a phasor minus J I stat into axis. So when I take this, that means I have to add this phasor in the opposite direction to the V bus. That is this. the addition of these two will get V stat. You can see from here V stat is greater than this. So the reactive power flows from V stat come to the bus. So it will act as a, it will supply the reactive power, it will act as a capacitor. Similarly for this case, if the uh, current is lagging to the bus by 90 degrees, the statcom will act as an inductor. You will see it, how this is the current and this is the voltage drop across this axis. It will be leading to this I statcom, this is actually I statcom. So it will be leading to it by 90 degrees. So I draw it like this. So again, we have to add this minus G I statcom axis to this V bus. So I have to take this phasor and in the opposite direction, that is this opposite direction to this bus, add this to the bus and we will get V statcom. In this case, V statcom will be less than V bus. So, reactive power flows from bus to the statcom. So, it will consume the reactive power. So, in other case, when the V bus and V statcom are zero, sorry, are equal, you will see that I statcom will be equal to zero. Q will be Q exchange will be zero. There will be no re reactive power exchange that will take place. So statcom is said to be floating with the bus. In all the book cases, V statcom and V bus are in phase with each other, as we have already discussed that. So there will be no real power exchange that will take place between the bus and statcom. It is because the angle between bus voltage and statcom voltage is zero. So there will be no real power exchange. We can do one thing that if we adjust the phase shift between the converter output voltage, statcom voltage, and the AC system voltage, we can similarly be able to control the exchange, control the real power exchange between the converter and the AC system. In other words, the converter can supply the real power to the system from its DC energy storage if the converter output voltage is made to lead the AC system voltage. So the only thing is we have to make this statcom voltage leading to the bus voltage. On the other hand, if it is uh, if it is made to lag the bus uh, bus voltage, we can say it will be able to consume the real power. So let us try to do these cases as well. 
let us say when vstat.com is lagging to the vbus so it will and this is the case that is this it will uh, consume the power in this case real power is consumed but stat.com by the stat.com has losses it will consume the power for compensating the losses or energy storage if it has energy storage device it can store the energy rate to power is supplied to the bus rate to power in this case will be supplied to the bus we'll, we'll see it from the physical diagram how this has happened and we we'll also see this this in this case we start is greater than v bus so you can see it we use the same equation that is this equation that a v bus will add this v bus uh, to a voltage but minus j i step x will add that voltage that means if the, uh, let us say we have a bus voltage over here and we have current leading to this bus voltage by 90 degrees sorry by some angle less than 90 degrees so the voltage drop across the inductor will lead to this current by 90 degrees so this will be voltage drop that is g i star excess so we have to subtract or we can say we have to add uh, the voltage phasor which is opposite to this and exactly same but opposite to this to the v bus so when we add it to the v bus we get this voltage phasor then we connect this point to this point this will be the v star com so in this case one thing that we have to be clear i have written here v stat com is greater than v bus but it should be v set v stat com cos of delta that should be greater than v bus so we need to sure about this uh, i have written here uh, v stat com please try to write it like that v stat com cos of delta should be greater than this and that is the case rate to power will be supplied to the bus and it can be also confirmed from this that it is uh, current it draws the current leading current it will act as a capacitor so from this since v bus is leading to the v state form it will consume the real power similarly let us assume that a current is uh, lagging to the bus voltage by uh, less than 90 degrees so in that case j i state x will be leading to this current by 90 degree when you subtract this voltage phasor or when we add to minus j i state s1 from v bus we will get to v stat form so in this case also if v stat com cos of delta is less than v bus though uh, then rate rate to power will be consumed by the uh, stat com also since v bus is leading to the v stat com again this real power will be consumed by the stat com this can also be uh, confirmed if you uh, can say resolve this current into two components one component in phase with v stat com another component which will be in quadrature with this v stat com you can see this will be lagging to this current like the inductor and this will be in phase to this it will consume the real power in that case also you can do that so one more thing when v stat com is leading to the v bus that means when this happens because of leading this state com to v bus you will see that it will supply the real power and this time this is only possible when there is an energy source in this case power will be supplied to the state com from the state com to the bus state com should have the energy source present this then it will be possible now let us see what will happen to the rate to power let us say this when this is the case when this is greater than this uh, v bus again this v stat cos of delta should be greater than v bus it should not be only v stat so when this is the case in this case you can draw these two phases that is one one phaser which will be greater than this phaser then definitely this voltage phaser will be the minus j i stat excess when this is the case because in this case we will draw it in the reverse direction so this will be the phaser so it means j, uh, j i stat excess will be this phaser that means from this point to this point and this is the case you will see the current will be in this direction that is what, what i have drawn or we can say when this is the case when it supplies the real uh, sorry real power uh, the current direction the real uh, the real, real component of this current should be opposite to this v stat so when you resolve into two components one component will be here and the component will be here this component is the this quadrature component which is uh, which is leading to the bus voltage and the state com voltage by 90 degrees you will see that it will act as a capacitor and it will supply the rate to power but the real component is in this direction that means uh, that is opposite to the, that of the v stat com that means it will now supply the real power as well <clears throat> so this is the one case and the cases here 
we'll assume here that visited com voltage is less visit visited com cos of delta is less than this reverse voltage and then we will uh, join a voltage phasor between these two this will be the voltage drop across xs but as we know that this will be equal to minus j i stat com access <coughs> that means i stat com access j i stat com access will be in this direction so the current will be which will be lagging to this voltage phasor that will be in this direction like this so i have drawn it like this this is the voltage current phasor this is the voltage phasor that is the which is uh, we can say uh, leading to this current by 90 degrees so here also you can also assume that this current is lagging to this voltage by an angle greater than 90 degree when you resolve it to two components one component will be in this direction another component will be in this direction so this current will be lagging to this v by 90 degrees one uh, current component is in a phase opposition to this v so that v will uh, supply the power to the bus and it will consume the power from the bus because current one component of the current is lagging so real power will be supplied and the resource should be present reactive power should be consumed and here v state com cos of delta is less than reba so you will correct here it is v state com cos of delta the power uh, relation between the bus voltage and the v state com voltage it can be calculated like this that is p is equal to reba v state com by excess sine of delta so in that case we can calculate this also The reactive power and the real power exchange between the STATCOM and the AC system can be controlled independently of each other. This is one of the beauty of this STATCOM that these two uh, powers can be exchanged independent of each other. If we control the real power without actually changing the reactive power, if we control the reactive power without actually affecting the this uh, real power, any combination of the real power generation or absorption with power generation or absorption. Is achievable if statcom is equipped with the energy storage device so for real power exchange we need an energy storage device of suitable capacity as depicted in the figure below we'll see it here let us here with the capability of extremely effective control strategies for the modulation of reactive and real power output it can be devised to improve the transient and dynamic stability of limits so we'll see that we'll discuss it how it improve the uh, this um, transient stability and dynamic and steady state stability will also discuss that so this is the we can see broader view of all the things that we have done so far you know, by using the phasor diagram that is this AC system uh, so stat come with energy storage device so it draws the current of AC these are its AC terminals these are DC terminals and this is IDC so we'll draw the phasors and we will uh, finally conclude what will be uh, where will be this p and q supplied and absorbed in the first quadrant for example this is, if it is vac that is the voltage state com voltage and if it's the current is in the first quadrant you will see that one component of current will be in quadrature and the component will be in phase with vac so because of this current you will see it consumes the real power or it absorbs the real power because that component will be in this direction and iq is leading to this vac that means it supplies the reactive power so in this quadrant second quadrant you will see that there are two components one component is in this direction and the component in, in this direction the real component is phase opposition to vac that means it supplies p and the reactive component is again perpendicular to this leading to this voltage by 90 that means it will act as a capacitor it will supply q as well for this quadrant if the current is in this direction one component will be in phase a portion that's a real component and the reactive component will be lagging to the voltage so because of the lagging nature it will be an inductor inductive nature that means it will draw the uh, real power it will consume the real power but because of the phase a portion of the real component it will absorb it will supply the feed that is real power in the fourth quadrant you will see that a uh, current will be like this it will have two components so the current real component will be in phase with vac that means it absorbs the real power and rate to components is lagging to the uh, vac by 90 degrees that means it absorbs the q as well so generally you can use this circle to depict each and everything and by using this circle you can also draw the phasor diagram at dc terminal there will be only two things if uh, idc and vdc are in phase 
that means the idc in this direction that means it is supplying uh, the real power if idc is in downward direction that means it is absorbing the real power because in at the seat there will be no concept of the uh, this reactive power i think today it is enough so i will stop here thank you